Hi, welcome back to Sensuality. I'm just making a little video today. I haven't made one in a few weeks. Um, I've been making a few perfumes in the last few days and basically what I wanted to do was to just put together a, a simple formula just to share with you but they became a lot more complicated. I basically thought I would make a video using some pre-made bases and just make a perfume with those just make it really simple uh, very few materials however when i started i you know kept on smelling the formula thinking oh i could do with a little bit of this it could be it could do with a little bit of that and before i knew where i was the perfumes had just grown and become so much more complicated and you know had 50 to, to 70 oils in them um I did make one and you know it was a surefire winner I really really enjoyed it it was really interesting I really loved it um, it was very simple uh, I used a, a few pre-made bases uh, and just a another few uh, molecules but you know nothing excessive and the magical ingredient in that perfume was this delightful uh, champignon uh, oil um, and what happened was, uh, I'll just explain with, uh, with regards to the perfume. Basically, I was making this perfume uh, and I, ha I had a few bases and uh, lots of things that really smelled good together. Uh, namely, uh, a leather um, base and just a phenomenal leather base. Um, and I just put just one drop of this uh, champignon uh, oil into the formula and it just set the whole perfume off. Uh, you know, it just really uh, concreted everything together, just this one drop and I could smell it in the top, it was in the heart and it was down there in the base as well. It just really blended well with this leather base. Um, but what I did was I went just a little bit too far with the perfume, uh, you know, beyond that point of no return. And uh, I realized I couldn't really save the perfume, couldn't take it in a new direction and I would have to start again. Uh, so I said to myself, I'll just leave this for now, come back in a couple of hours, and I'll put the formula together again up until the point when I added in that magical champignon oil, and, um, and then I'll just leave it, leave it there, and then I'll make a video about it, and I'll share it with you, and uh, job done. But what happened was, meantime, about an hour later, I came back to the room and I decided I would hang something up on the wall. And when I was hanging that up on the wall, I knocked that beautiful champignon oil onto the floor and it smashed. And I lost all of the oil and the room, you know, has smelled like uh, mushrooms for days now. And um, a really phenomenal smell, but not something you want to smell every time you walk into a room. Um, but yeah, so I couldn't go forward with that perfume. And I needed to make it again, just, uh, you know, so I had the satisfaction that I was happy with it before I, you know, made a video and shared it with you. So I have to wait till I order some more. Um, I'll put the formula together again, and then I'll be sure to share it. But it was phenomenal. An unusual smell but you know that's kind of like that's what I like about perfumes I like when they are you know really interesting and just to have this mushroom note was really interesting but it really worked it was a really you know it was a masculine perfume uh, like I said it was leather um, you had that earthy mushroom I think I had a saffron base in there and it was oh, it was just phenomenal it was definitely um, something I would wear um, but yeah so as I said I ended up making a few more things and they were very 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 complicated um, but I thought maybe I would just share one not that I think you could make it at home because obviously you'd have to have all of the oils that I've used and um, in my experience when I come across other people's formulas uh, I never have everything that they've used uh, I don't think I've been able to truly replicate somebody else's formula um, because you know uh, there, there are so many molecules to buy there are so many essential oils absolutes and you know you just can't possibly have them all um, 
So yeah, I thought I would just share this one. So as I said, it's a little bit more complicated. I'm just going to briefly talk about some things that are in there and I'm gonna just try and explain uh, the smell of this perfume. Because I think, you know, sharing any information on perfumery, you know, is, is gold dust basically because it's hard to come by. So, um, maybe, you know, from the list of uh, uh, materials that I've used, you can maybe, you know, just begin to put together some, some sort of sense. Um, not that I think that you can make sense of it because I think if you, if you, um, apply your head, uh, uh, you won't be able to get to where I got to because I never really use my head with perfumery. Uh, the only thing uh, that I would liken to using my head is, is, is to use my awareness because I just like to uh, do the practical, build my intuition, uh, your awareness grows and um, you know, you're no longer thinking about something, you're just doing it. Now, uh, I'm not going to start in any particular place because I have this bad habit when I'm making a perfume. I'm very, uh, you know, scruffy when I'm writing stuff down. Uh, a lot of the time, I, um, you know, uh, I just, uh, when I get caught in the moment of making a perfume, I'm just really, you know, very much there. And then I have the next idea straight away. And I'm like, okay, now I need to do this. And I like to do things straight away because, uh, you know, I, I tend to forget them. I'm not very good at keeping things in my short-term memory. Um, my long-term memory is awesome, but short-term memory, not so great. So I just like to act very quickly. And um, I tend to just write things down very scruffily. Uh, you know, sometimes mm, I might, you know, not write things down very accurately. And sometimes <laughs> it does take me a little bit of, um, you know, figuring out exactly what is going on with my formula. And because, you know, one of the ways in which I love to make a perfume is just to, uh, you know, completely follow your intuition, completely follow your instincts, uh, your awareness that you've built on. And, um, you know, you're making a base, you're adding some things in the base, then you go onto the heart, you add some things to the heart, and then you, you add some things to the top, but then you go back to the base, you go back to the top, you go back to the heart, and I just keep readjusting everything until I am happy with it, or until, you know, I get to a place and I realize I can't go any further, and I just have to scrap it. But, um, yeah, the point of me explaining that to you is just so you know that these materials that I'm going to read aren't in any particular order because I have, um, you know, there's base mixed in with heart mixed in um, with top notes. So um, I have this fantastic material, uh, Guaya, Gaia Call, I think uh, that's pronounced correctly. Like this is a really phenomenal material. It's a, a, a smoky material. And if you've used things like, um, uh, what have I got? Uh, birch tar, um, cared oil, uh, or guaiac wood. Now, um, birch tar and cared, they're definitely smelling more like tar, more like, um, uh, you know, like the, the if, you've, if you've burnt a fire and then you put the fire out, it has that kind of smell. Um, but guaiac wood is definitely more like smoky bacon. So imagine if you combined the smoky bacon with um, with 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 the the the, the smoke of a fire, um, then you have this uh, guaiacol. But even then, I would go a step further and to say that it's 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 a lot more suave. It's um, a lot cleaner. You can definitely use it in a perfume. And um, not really get what you get when you when you just use cade oil or you just use birch tar because it's it's that's a really really um, harsh you know there's rough edges there it's very very strong cade oil uh, birch tar very very strong but I find that this guaiacol is you know it's definitely masculine but you can make it feminine no bother you can make an incense accord with it i think it it fits into uh the perfume better it definitely blends better with other oils um and it doesn't stick out too much uh you know it's it's it it performs the way you would want it to perform it is a smoky note uh but it also 
is very user friendly, I think. Um, I'm not too sure about the, the dilution that that's used in. I used it at 100% uh, just because I liked it so much. I mean, I like it so much I would wear it, um, you know, uh, just in the privacy of my own home. But uh, that's how much I like I like the material. Um, so I also used this Accord and it's a, uh, well, I say Accord, it's a, a, a poucher uh, formula for a fougere. Um, I think it's number 1017 and you can find this formula online uh, and, it's, and you know it's free um, and this is basically a fougere accord um, base and i basically made that up really really liked it i would wear that um, but i decided to use that as a material i also used uh, poucher's palma violet um, accord the formula for his uh, palma violet uh, i made a previous video uh, about that um, and I just added a couple of extra things in there myself uh, I think I added heliotropics in I added a little bit of mahogany uh, possibly um, and I added undercavitol which are just you know um, violet uh, violet molecules um, so you know it didn't change it drastically I just sort of added some more violet molecules to it um, I also used another poucher um, formula as a material so there's another perfume called santolina um, it's very heavy on lavender uh, i basically just made some of that up and i used that as a material um, uh, obviously i've got some iso e super in there i've got some hedione in uh, i used a classic wood base that i bought um, you can get this from from lots of different places you know there's always a a classic uh, wood uh, base available from lots and lots of different uh, suppliers. I just and I I would assume they're quite generic in their smell. Um, so I used a, a classic wood base. I used an amber base. That's an oriental amber base. Um, a, a basil, a, a, a linalu based basil. Um, so not the the basil that smells too much like licorice. Um, I used some dill seed. Uh, I used an oud base. Um, I used vetiver, which is another fantastic material. If you like vetiver, um, it's definitely more of a suave vetiver. You know, it's molecule. Uh, there's always a difference between a molecule and, a, and an essential oil in smell. Um, but yeah, a great material. I really, really love it. Uh, uh, very different to um, vetiver, uh, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic uh, smell combined with that um, guayacol uh, and, and the oud base. It's, it's just phenomenal. They work really well together. Um, what else? And then we've got this leather base that I got from Perfumers World, and it's just exquisite. Smells beautiful. You know, um, it's definitely um, in the same ballpark as Castorium. Um, uh, and indeed, if you ever buy uh, the Castorium base from Perfumers World, the Castorium fluorescence, uh, that too has a lot of that leather base in it. So, you know, um, I think I have used it in this perfume, but they all work together well. Um, so, yeah, we've got Vetival, Vetival, we've got the leather fluorescence. Um, what else have I got? I also used a mushroom base from Perfumers World, but it doesn't smell anything like that champignon oil. Um, uh, you know, like nothing like it. I mean, it smells like a 90s um, shower gel to me. Um, but I used a little bit of that. Uh, I used some Opopanax uh, resinoid. I used Labdanum Absolute. Uh, I used a saffron base from Perfumers World as well, saffron fluorescence phenomenal smell one of my favorite materials um, I used uh, the castorium fluorescence I also used a seaweed base from perfumers world um, definitely you know if you're a fan of, of things like cool waters and it has like this ozonic um, melon uh, type of a vibe uh, you know this is basically that it's an accord so you've got bass notes, you've got heart notes, you've got top notes uh, to give this marine feel to your perfume. Um, there's definitely some cologne in there as well. Um, what else have we got? We've got some cassia bark. 
that's you know very um, dry harsh cinnamon note um, we have habana lied uh, that's a musk we have some yavanol we have some padma um, cedar wood usa we have uh, some cypress oil we have uh, champaca um, what else have we got some alpha damascone we have a couple of oils which i have written in abbreviations um, and i can't for the life of me think of exactly what they are uh, so i will make sure that i put them up on the screen now um, uh, also i put a little bit of violet leaf in there i also put in a creed accord now this doesn't have anything to do with creed um, uh, specifically, uh, I got this also from another website, and this is another perfumer, and he actually has lots and lots and lots of uh, formulas on this website, and uh, he seems to have made general approximations of very well-known perfumes. So uh, one of his, uh, he has an, a section uh, for accords, and he has this one which he calls a creed accord, and it's just something to use to give um, your perfume that familiar creed uh, freshness um, it has a lot of ambroxan in it uh, ambergris uh, and dehydromercenol i can't really remember what else is in there i made it a while ago um, but i used a little bit of that um, what else have we got here i use some affamate which basically smells like rock pools it's very salty ozonic very masculine i feel um, I use a little bit of amyl salicylate, a little bit of winter green, terpenoline, um, methyl cinnamate, peconia, ginger, whole leaf, cardamom, nutmeg, grapefruit, um, laurel leaf, coniferin pure, um, and that's it. Um, so uh, it's hard to imagine. Um, uh, just listening to me uh, rhyming off all of these molecules and um, the reason before I said if you try to approach your head to it and you think well why has he used that what's the reason for that what does that do um, I'm never thinking like that I'm just following my nose so you know I go off smell I go off how things behave with each other I you know go off what I want or which which uh, aspect I want to um, you know, focus on, accentuate, uh, and that's basically how I make a perfume. And uh, I will say, you know, I don't like really very often set off with an idea for a perfume and uh, that uh, idea comes to fruition uh, because basically what happens is I just follow the perfume wherever it takes me and my aim is just to make a perfume that works. Uh, it might be feminine, it might be masculine, I might like it, I might not like it. Uh, for me the goal is just to discover something, something that's already there, uh, something, you know, I just let the, the perfume, uh, you know, take me. Uh, I just follow the navigation. Um, which is my nose and uh, yeah that's basically what I do so if you try to understand the reasons behind why I've used things you know just stop because it's just purely my nose um, a lot of the times I just experiment a lot of the times I take risks and I just think oh you know in my head I would think this would not go with that but I put them together anyway and see what happens and you know you will get much better at making perfume if you do these things uh, don't see it as wasting materials see it as investing materials don't think about the money aspect of it um, that will crush your creativity just be free um, you know focus on the creativity uh, because it's about the journey it's not about anything else it's not about the stage it's not about selling a perfume it's not about making money making a profit once it's about those things there goes your creativity you can make money from um from your creativity uh as a byproduct of your creativity but if it's the sole purpose for you uh being creative uh you're not really going to be that creative um but yeah i mean uh you know when you're making perfume you really just follow your nose that's the best thing is just to use your own instincts you don't use your head your head isn't good for much 
especially when it comes to creativity. Your head just gets in the way. It's a tool at the end of the day, and very few of us can actually control that tool. It gets the better of us most times. On most occasions, it will win, uh, and we really have to um, learn how to be more in control of our minds uh, because when it comes to creative things it really does hold us back uh, we are really good at telling ourselves that we can't do things when actually we can we can do anything we want to do but the secret in doing what you want to do is to get your mind on board so you know that should be priority number one before you even uh, get any perfume oils you know it would be best to do that first but um, I just really wanted to share that with you because I think motivation is the most important thing and you know if there's anything I want my channel to be about it's it's uh, enthusiasm and it's uh, just to breed enthusiasm uh, and positive positive thinking and um, because you know creativity it can be a really uh, a freeing thing but it can also be something which imprisons you if it is governed by your mind so yeah be free um enjoy making perfume uh you know think outside the box uh don't stay in the box at all uh, you know there is a general um you know rule of thumb you kind of learn the box and then you get out of the box you know uh you expand the walls uh, slightly uh, you know uh, dip your feet in the water and then you know put your whole body in just start swimming and swim as far as you can uh, and that's all I really want to say today so thanks for watching thanks for tuning in I hope you have uh, you know gained a little bit of insight from this video and uh, I'll be making another one soon <laughs>